A lot of people ask me if you can incorporate intuitive eating while having fitness goals like muscle growth. And to that, I always say, hey everyone, I'm Abby Sharp. Welcome to Abby's Kitchen. Today we're going to be taking a look at Patty from Lean Beef Patty. And you can pause the screen or look at the description to check out my disclaimer, including a trigger warning to those with current or previous experiences with disordered eating. As always, please feel free to skip this video if it's not supportive to your journey. And if you're not already subscribed here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and follow me over on TikTok and Instagram at Abby's Kitchen. Okay, so if you're not already aware, Patty is a fitness influencer who has recently exploded on the YouTube scene, sharing fitness advice and her high protein recipes. In one of her recent videos, she shared that she has a history of eating disorders like anorexia and bulimia, and that she now considers herself a flexible dieter incorporating some principles of intuitive eating. Let's take a look. So pretty much what that means is I track things, but I don't track them super closely. And I still like to rely on some concepts from intuitive eating, which is the idea that listening to your body and what sounds good and being able to read and respect your hunger cues. The reason why I'm not fully intuitive with eating is because if I was, I wouldn't eat enough protein. So when I track, I mostly focus on just eating enough protein and staying within my maintenance calories. So sure, probably if I track more strictly probably if I did a bulk and a cut I could look just way better than I look now I'm not sure doing something like that would be beneficial for me I might personally fall down a dark path a lot of people ask me if you can incorporate intuitive eating while having fitness goals like muscle growth and to that I always say of course even athletes with extreme dietary needs can benefit from some aspects of intuitive eating. Not everyone is going to be able to utilize all 10 of the principles at all times, but that doesn't mean that you've failed at intuitive eating. Gentle nutrition is part of the intuitive eating model, and depending on your unique goals or needs, this is gonna look very different to different people. So since Patty is very physically active, her nutrient needs and specifically her protein needs are quite high. So if she's collected the data that she feels better and can recover easier when she intentionally eats a higher amount of protein, it's really coming from a place of self-care. And the fact that she can be flexible and not stress over falling short of her ideal protein goal is a great sign of achieving food freedom. Right now let's take a look at her vegetarian day of eating. I've already had my coffee prepared in the usual way with monk fruit and creamer. You know my drill on coffee. You drink it how you like it. And monk fruit is a very popular option right now because it's typically better tolerated than other low or no calorie sweeteners by a lot of folks with sensitive guts. And this is what it's looking like. Our oatmeal. I haven't decided if I wanted to mix these yet. So we just got a teaspoon of peanut butter in there and a teaspoon of peanut butter in there. They're separate for now. This is a classic hunger crushing combo. We got loads of fiber and carbs from the oatmeal, healthy fats in the nut butter and protein in the Greek yogurt. Check, check, check. Finished product now, a fourth cup of chickpeas, a fourth cup of quinoa, a fourth cup of edamame, 106 grams of tofu, grape tomato, some cucumber and 30 milliliters of hummus. If you're asking a dietitian, this definitely meets the criteria for a balanced Mediterranean bowl. We got whole grains, beans, legumes, and veggies, all the classic fixtures of a Mediterranean diet. And we love that for her since we've got ample research that a Mediterranean diet helps to support heart health, blood sugar management, and inflammation. We're also getting a nice variety of protein sources in the tofu, quinoa, chickpeas, and edamame, which means that we're going to cover all of our amino acid needs and support a diverse and bountiful microbiome. I think there's definitely room for maybe a bit more fats in here, maybe some nuts or cheese or some dressing, which would also help to rectify the bland factor that she described. Folks, don't ever forget that fat is flavor and can also help to make naturally nourishing foods more desirable. I'm gonna have a protein bar, plant-based protein bar. These out of the other, I think like three plant-based protein bars I had are pretty good. So hazelnut nougat 
flavor. So this looks like a great quick and easy pre-workout bar with a nice balance of protein and carbs. And let's be real, hazelnut flavored anything slaps. Jeez. But for folks who do have sensitive guts, I would just be mindful of products sweetened with maltitol, which is a high FODMAP sweetener associated with a lot of gas, bloating, and other digestive symptoms. In contrast, erythritol, which is a new generation sweetener, has a lower molecular weight than other sugar alcohols, so it tends to be tolerated much better for most folks. My water! Gotta be drinking water. I haven't been drinking enough. So goal is to finish this gallon by the end of the day. Do we need to be drinking a gallon of water a day? Well, for most healthy folks, probably not. For some, a gallon may be way too much. For others, probably not enough. So despite the standard eight cups a day recommendation, our hydration needs will fluctuate day to day based on climate, perspiration, medication, hormones, and how many calories we eat. But as a general guideline, we recommend about 2.2 liters of beverages or 2.7 liters of total water, which would include water rich foods from like fruits and veg. But if you don't wanna fuss over tracking, which I mean, I wouldn't, you can also just take a peek in the toilet. A lemonade hue is generally a good sign. Clear pee should really not be the goal since too much water can put excess strain on the kidneys, resulting in a really unproductive day on the toilet at best, or a potentially fatal electrolyte imbalance at worst. <laughs> Love the protein diversity here with the protein pasta, vegan beef crumbles, nutritional yeast, and Greek yogurt sauce. We're looking at about 53 grams of protein in this one meal alone. Now, a lot of people talk about the fact that the body can only use about 20 to 30 grams of protein per meal, and that the rest of that protein allegedly just goes to waste. And that's kind of true, but also kind of false. It is true that the body can only utilize about 0.4 grams per kilogram per meal across four or more meals for muscle protein synthesis. But it doesn't mean that the rest of the protein just goes to waste. Protein is king in the satiety hierarchy. So if you're trying to lose fat or maintain body fat loss, it's advantageous to get at least 0.31 grams per kilogram of body weight of protein per meal. The higher calorie needs, the higher your protein needs. Now, in an ideal scenario for bodybuilding or muscle growth, we could split a meal like this into two, but I get the sense that Patty doesn't want her fitness goals to run her life. So if it's easier and more sustainable for her to meet her total calories and protein needs in one meal rather than to have to fuss over sitting down for two, I think that's a great plan. Cottage cheese, woohoo! There we are. Three fourths cup cottage cheese, eight grams of honey, 28 grams of almonds, and 42 grams of frozen blueberries. I am totally biased, but I think this is a perfect bedtime snack because I literally eat this most nights of the week. Cottage cheese is a absolute favorite in the fitness community because it's got a whopping 23 grams of protein per cup. And it's uniquely rich in casein protein, which is a slow digesting protein that helps to keep you fuller overnight and helps aid in muscle protein synthesis while you sleep. Almonds are also a great sleep supporting food since they're a natural source of magnesium and the sleepy hormone melatonin. And we also love the fiber rich carbs from the berries here, which can help to support serotonin levels. This looks like a perfect hunger crushing combo for sleep. Macros ended up being 61 grams of fat, 197 grams of carbs, 143 grams of protein, which again, that's more than I normally get, and a little bit over 1800 calories. So that's kind of crazy. I had more protein than I usually have on an average day. Also, I would like to say I don't feel hungry at all or I'm needing something more at this moment. I feel very satiated. So I'm really not surprised that Patty feels completely satiated since protein helps to reduce our hunger hormone ghrelin and boost our satiety hormone peptide YY. And since plant-based sources of protein are also typically rich in satiating fiber, we've naturally got a solid hunger crushing combo. I also think there's a huge misconception that it's harder to meet your protein needs on a plant-based diet. However, we actually have researched that most plant-based eaters actually get well beyond the protein that they need. So whether you're a meat eater or plant-based, getting enough protein in your day 
really comes down to meal frequency and diversity. So I think this was a great example of how folks who are hoping to eat more plant-based can still even meet very high protein needs with a bit of planning. I also love that a lot of her meals lean on some nutritious processed foods like canned beans, microwavable quinoa, fortified pasta, and frozen veggies. And yes, I said nutritious and processed in the same sentence. Guys, processed foods are not inherently unhealthy. And in fact, a lot of them, like frozen veggies, may actually be more nutrient rich than fresh. So don't think that every meal needs to be cooked from scratch to support good health. Overall, I really love Patty's vibe. And I think she's a really great example of a creator who acknowledges that she is in fact dieting, but that she still aims to incorporate some of the principles of intuitive eating that serve her best. She knows her limits on what level of dietary control or tracking may be triggering for her, and she can be gracious and flexible when she doesn't meet her nutrient goals. Honestly, I'm loving this girl's content, and I will continue to keep an eye on her channel. So on that note, that's all that I have for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it the thumbs up. Leave me a comment below on who or what you'd like to see me review next. Subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time on Abby's Kitchen. Bye.